Welcome to the Guns and Robots tutorial. Here, you will learn how to use the garage, the workbench, and the inventory, as well as how to test your newest creation. You are presently in the garage, and this is Rusty, your first robot. Notice that Rusty occupies one of your three starting garage slots. As you accumulate new parts and try out new designs, you could either purchase new garage slots, or you can disassemble one of your old robots to free up space for a new one. To build a new robot, however, you will first need to leave the garage and go to the workbench screen. Press the little gear button up in the menu. This is the workbench area. Here, you'll create the modules from which your robots are assembled. Click the little arrow on the left to open your inventory screen. This is your inventory. You'll notice that there are several tabs on the side. They allow you to filter the parts in your inventory by category. Click on the wheel button so we can begin with assembling our chassis. We can now select one of the available chassis for our robot. First, click on a chassis to select it. Now that the chassis is selected, you can examine its statistics in the window on the bottom left. You can now either click on another chassis to examine it, or double-click your selected chassis to use it on the workbench. Double-clicking has attached the chassis to your cursor, and you can now drag it onto the workbench. When you drag a robot part, a chassis in this case, Near the center of the screen, a bluish hologram outline will appear. Clicking the left mouse button at this time will place the selected part within the working environment. Well done! Each chassis needs an engine to put it in motion. Next, you should select one of the available engines and drag it onto the screen. For some smaller parts, like the engines or batteries, it may be difficult to spot the hologram within the housing part. Remember that you can use your mouse scroll to zoom in and out of the screen. And holding the middle mouse button will allow you to rotate the camera. Now place the selected engine inside the robot chassis. You have just assembled your first module. Now press the Save Module button. This will save the chassis module for future use. If you do not press the button, the module will be discarded. Next, you should assemble a body module. In the available inventory filters, press the Body tab. Select a body and drag it onto the workbench screen. Now you should select and add a battery. It provides the energy your robot will need during combat. Each body module requires at least one battery to be assembled. A lot of the bodies, however, can accept more than one battery. Outfitting your robot with extra energy is never a bad thing. If you're done with the body module, press the Save Module button. Next, you will assemble some weapons. Select the appropriate filter tab in the inventory. Each weapon consists of two parts. The basic part is your firing mechanism. Select and drag one onto the screen. The firing mechanism is designed to accept a wide variety of barrels. Furthermore, its specific design may modify your rate of fire, damage output, and in some cases, even the number of barrels you can attach to it. Now, select and attach a barrel to the firing mechanism. Don't forget to save your weapon module. It's never good to find yourself outgunned. So browse the available mechanisms and barrels and assemble another weapon module. Don't forget to save your weapon module. You have assembled enough modules to build yourself a robot. You can do this in the garage. To return to the garage, press the little robot button in the menu. Rusty is still waiting for you here, but since you're building a new robot, Press one of the free garage slot buttons. On this assembly platform, you will build your robot in a fashion similar to the module building in the workbench screen. Click on the chassis tab of your inventory. By default, your inventory will only display your saved modules while you're in the garage screen. Select the chassis module you created and place it on the platform. Now, select a body module and place it on top of the chassis when the blue hologram appears. Select a weapon and attach it to your body. Keep in mind that you will be allowed to enter battle without a weapon, 
but doing so is not really advisable. Good. Now attach another weapon. Keep in mind that some bodies accept more than two weapon modules, although they tend to be more fragile than their two armed counterparts. Your robot is almost complete. If you are not satisfied with some of the modules you have applied, you can always select a particular module by clicking on the robot model and then right-clicking to remove it. Keep in mind, removing a module will also remove all other modules attached to it. For now, let's stick with our current selection, however. Press the Head tab in your inventory. Heads are one-piece modules, and they don't need to be assembled from other parts. Be advised, if you lose your head in combat, this will limit your control over the robot. Now, select a head and attach it to your robot. Your robot is now complete. Since it is important to know what it is capable of, before facing the dangers of arena combat, we recommend that you always take a new robot for a test drive first, but you will try that in a moment. First, you should get acquainted with repairing and resupplying your robot. Click the repair button on the bottom of your screen. You see a list of all the modules comprising your robot. Your robot is healthy now, but after a battle, this will rarely be the case. Notice the Auto Repair checkbox. If you activate it, your robot will be repaired automatically upon returning to the garage after a battle. Keep in mind that if you lack the funds to repair all of the damage sustained, no repairs will be done automatically and you will have to fix your robot manually by entering this screen. Next to each module, you can see its individual repair cost. Clicking the Wrench button will repair this module only. On the bottom, you will see the total amount needed to fully repair your robot. Clicking the Buy button will repair all of your damaged modules, should you have sufficient funds. To exit the repair window, click the Close button in the upper right hand corner. Next to the Repair button, you will find the Resupply button. Click it now. You see a list of all the weapons your robot is wielding. Notice the Auto Resupply checkbox. If you activate it, your weapons will be fully loaded upon returning to the garage after a battle. As with repairs, if you lack the funds to resupply all weapons, no ammo will be purchased and you will have to enter this screen to do it manually. You will always have to resupply a new robot manually before entering a battle for the first time. To the left of each weapon, you will find an icon indicating the currently selected ammo type. With the arrows on each side of the icon, you can cycle through the different ammo types available. You can hover your cursor above the ammo type icon to see a description of the selected ammo's properties. Remember, energy weapons use no ammo and they draw on your battery instead. Next to the ammo type icon is the current ammo slider. It shows the maximum ammo capacity of a weapon, as well as the amount of ammo you want to load it with. By pressing the Max Load button on the top of your weapon list, all ammo sliders will be set to maximum so you can reload all of your weapons faster. On the right, you can see your ammo reserve count for each weapon. When resupplying, ammo will always be drawn from your reserve first. On the bottom, you can see the total cost of the ammo you have chosen to resupply with. Pressing the Buy button will confirm the purchase should you have sufficient funds available. When you're done resupplying your robot, Click the close button to leave this screen. Now you're ready to take your new robot for a spin. Click the test button to enter the testing area. In the testing area, you will learn how to control your robot and how to read the information displayed by your interface. In the upper left corner of your screen, you can now notice some important parameters. The red bar shows your overall robot durability. It's the sum total of your chassis, body, head, and weapon modules. The blue bar shows your remaining energy. Depending on your build, it may barely budge or you may find it depleted very quickly. Energy regenerates over time, but should you find the gauge empty, it's probably time to deactivate some of your energy intensive weapons. Below the energy bar, you will find indicators for your specific module's durability. Losing all of your chassis durability will immediately render you immobile for the rest of the round. Losing all of your head durability will invert your directional controls for the rest of the battle. Losing all of your body durability will immediately destroy your robot. Try to preserve your body at all costs. 
One thing to keep in mind is that even if your body is destroyed, the rest of your modules suffer no additional damage and you'll only have to repair the damage they've sustained up to this point. Finally, below your player portrait you can find a gauge, showing your top speed and your current speed. Move your robot around by using the directional keys. Try and cross the water ditch now. When you cross the water ditch, you may notice a substantial drop in your movement speed. It is important to remember that some surfaces incur movement penalties and are best avoided by robots with low maneuverability. On the firing range, you may practice with your weapons. This will give you some idea of their rate of fire, accuracy, and energy consumption parameters. You can see each of your weapons depicted by the corresponding icon on one of the sides of your screen. Weapons shown on your left hand side are fired by pressing the left trigger button. Weapons that appear on your right hand side are fired by pressing the right trigger button. Holding any of the buttons will result in sustained fire. By pressing the corresponding number keys 1 through 4, you can deactivate or reactivate any weapon of your choice in order to conserve ammo or energy. The red bar depicts a particular weapon's durability. Once it's depleted, the weapon will be detached and you will be denied the use of that weapon for the rest of the battle. So pay attention to it. The vertical bar depicts the relative amount of ammo left for that weapon. If the vertical bar is yellow, it represents the bullets or missiles you have remaining. If the vertical bar is blue, it shows the amount of energy you have left to spend. Energy is shared across multiple systems of your robot, so be careful with it. Ammo spent in the training area is not subtracted from your ammo reserves, so there's no reason to hold back. Experiment with your weapons as much as you like. If you run out of ammo, you can always use the ammo pickup in the right firing range corner. And if your build relies heavily on energy weapons, you may find the energy pickup useful, located in the left corner of the firing range. When you're done practicing, you can leave the area by pressing Escape and selecting Return to Garage from the in-game menu. There's one last thing left to learn. How to purchase new equipment for your robots. Press the shopping cart button to enter the shop. In the right hand shop screen, you can spend the credits you earn by playing to purchase new parts for your robots. You can use the same filters present in your inventory to sort through the different types of parts. When you want to purchase a new part, click on the part to select it, then click the buy button and confirm your decision in the pop-up window. In the left hand shop screen, you can sell some of your old parts when you find them no longer necessary. When you're done exploring the shop, you can leave by pressing the close button in the upper right corner. That was all you needed to know to play guns and robots. Now you can experiment with building new robots in the garage, or you can enter an arena immediately by pressing the big red button on the top of your screen. Good luck, and may your aim be true. <laughs>